Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I want to take a look at this Gigabyte GA5AA motherboard. Uh, it's a SuperSocket 7 board and it has an ALI chipset which I've heard really great things about so I really want to get this going so I can give it a try. But unfortunately this particular board doesn't work. Uh, now a quick visual inspection uh, shows that the caps are all uh, in good order. There's no bulging caps or leaking ones. I uh, haven't tested them electrically, but uh, they don't appear to be uh, in bad condition. Um, the other things that I can see that are wrong visually are that there's a missing battery. Well, that's a very easy fix, of course, and there's just a crack in the end of the AGP slot. Uh, now, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue because uh, there's actually a support in the middle of the slot here which will stop the card from shifting. I mean, that's not its actual use, it's really there uh, to stop you inserting cards that take a different voltage. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this is not going to allow the card to shift, uh, which could cause it to lose contact. Uh, in any case, I've tried a PCI card in this and uh, no difference, so uh, that's definitely not the issue. Uh, so the first thing to check, of course, is if there are any shorts on the power rails um, and obviously check each of these capacitors. There seem to be two different kinds of capacitors. There's these uh, uh, goldy kind of ones and these silver ones. And that's actually loose. Wow, that capacitor is completely loose. It's not connected at all. Uh, what about the rest of these? Are there any others that are... Ah, so that one is two. So we have two actually completely disconnected capacitors there. Uh, Alright, so that's, uh, that's a clue, I think, to start us off with. Uh, there may be a problem there. Um, anyway, if that doesn't turn anything up, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the problem. But uh, we'll also check the uh, power regulator and these other components that are heat synced here, uh, just to make sure those are working. Uh, they're the most likely ones to fail because that's where all the heat is being generated. Uh, so the other thing of course is we'll have to set the jumpers correctly. So this board actually supports uh, all the way from 2.0 to 3.5 volts. I think this table is just continued here. And uh, it also supports uh, front side bus from 66 up to 140 megahertz, which is really cool and uh, it has multipliers from 1.5 to 5.5. Uh, so it really is a pretty versatile board. It also has an uh, ATX connector as well as an AT connector. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting it going. Uh, so let's take a look at those capacitors first since that is obviously uh, a problem. Well if you look at the other side of the board, the two capacitors that I was talking about are this one here uh, which you can probably see wobbling, and uh, this one here. And in fact, there is actually uh, some solder rework that is visible on the board here. Uh, and in fact, this one has actually got a single pad uh, all the way around here. Um, so obviously this capacitor shouldn't be soldered on this side of the board, uh, because if that were the case, then it would just be shorting across itself, which is not very useful. Uh, so what I think may have happened here is that someone has tried to recap this board, and they haven't realized that this shouldn't be soldered on this side. They probably tried and tried to get it to connect on this side and given up and found that the board doesn't work anymore and just thrown it away. Uh, so their loss is hopefully our gain. Uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is just desolder these and take them out of the board and then we'll try and uh, you know, replace them with equivalents uh, and solder them incorrectly, uh, which will probably be a little bit messy, but uh, I think that we should be able to manage this without any trouble. Now removing the caps should be a lot easier than putting them back in again. I'm just going to use these side cutters and snip the back off. Of course I've looked at the orientation of these caps so I know I won't get uh, that messed up. Uh, and I'm just going to cut these tails off uh, as close to the board as I can. Um, and that should make them easy to just pull out. Um, Hopefully won't damage anything here doing this. Well, this one might need some solder now, maybe it'll be alright. Uh, so let's just see whether they uh, they wobble loose. Uh, no, they're a bit tight in there. Now I'll have to uh, you know use a little bit of force to get those out. Now I did get the capacitors out and initially there's a little bit of confusion because I see some sort of silver colour here uh, on both of these holes. 
Uh, but when I get the multimeter out and check, uh, I find that only the left hand one is actually connected to this pad on this side and the right hand one is connected to a similar pad on the other side. Uh, so obviously only one of these leads needs to be soldered on this side. Uh, the other one is a little bit more straightforward. There's not a single pad here. It's uh, really jumping across. Uh, I can see what looks like some damage on the board here, but um, I don't see any damage to the traces and I'm not exactly sure what that is, whether it's a scratch or actually something that's just uh, got stuck to the uh, board when they've applied the lacquer or something like that. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell, uh, but we'll have a go with the multimeter and make sure that none of these traces are broken. Uh, but I think it should be straightforward now just to solder some new components in. These are uh, 25 volt, uh, 330 microfarad um, electrolytics and I have some of those so this is not going to be a problem to replace. Well I soldered both of these capacitors uh, on this side as close to the board as my soldering skills will allow and I apologize that I don't have this on film but uh, it's impossible to control the camera and do a very very fiddly soldering job at the same time. Uh, now these aren't quite exactly the same brand as was in there but they are at least the same value. Uh, so on the other side, what I've done is solder just one of the leads, uh, the one that's supposed to be connected to this pad, and just left the other one floating. Uh, for this capacitor, I actually soldered on both sides of the board because there are no traces uh, on the faces of the board, as far as I can see, apart from this big pad here. And uh, so I suspect that there's actually a connection inside the board, which surprises me somewhat. I wouldn't have thought this board would have more than two layers. Uh, but uh, there certainly aren't any traces there. Uh, now I did check all the nearby traces here to see whether there's a break or anything here where that mark is and everything's fine so I think we can just power this up now and see whether it works. Well I've connected everything up. I put a fan on the CPU. Uh, obviously there's an AGP video card. It's just a Rage Pro and I put a stick of RAM in it, a PC133 uh, I've connected up a power supply. Is this an AT power supply and also an AT keyboard that I've connected? And naturally, I put a battery in it uh, so that we can get, uh, you know, the BIOS settings saved. Uh, well, and the only thing that remains is to turn it on and see what happens. And hopefully, we don't just get uh, sparks and smoke out of this thing. Uh, well, the fan is turning. That's a good sign. And hopefully. Uh, it's not looking very good. Uh, it looks pretty dead actually. Oh, wait, something's happening. Oh, it works! Fantastic! Oh, so we've got it working. I can't... I, honestly, I really wasn't expecting it to work. Uh, that's amazing actually. So, uh, well, this is great. We can try out this board. Uh, so it says CMOS checks some bad. That's probably uh, just because the battery hasn't been in it for a while. And uh, let's have a look in the settings here. So just a standard uh, BIOS settings there, and uh, it's a very full featured board apparently. Uh, so let's have a look in chipset settings. There are some options in there we can fiddle with uh, for overclocking by the looks of it, uh, which is nice. I've so just standard power management, uh, and uh, it looks very very well set up. Uh, let's have a look in integrated peripherals. Yeah, just the standard stuff here: serial, uh, parallel, floppy drive, etc. Uh, now we will need to set up a hard drive of course and uh, obviously I'm going to need to put this in a box. I'll also probably switch over to the Pentium 233 chip that I have uh, which is going to be a little bit faster than this and we'll see how far we can go with overclocking uh, if at all. Uh, I'm really not sure whether those actually overclock. Uh, but let's give this board a whirl and see what it can do. Well this is the box that I've decided to put it in. This is actually a complete system uh, in itself. It's got a Pentium 233 in it. Uh, it even has a Voodoo 3DFX card in it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is take uh, the innards of this out and put uh, the ALI board in. Uh, I'll do a quick benchmark first just to see whether changing the board uh, does anything for us. I don't expect that it will. Uh, just with default settings. I think these boards are just more flexible rather than faster. Uh, but then we'll uh, install Windows and some games and uh, we'll try and see whether uh, we can make this machine uh, run any faster.
Well, this is inside the machine, and uh, this is where the Pentium 233 MMX uh, is under that uh, fan. Uh, there's also the Voodoo 3DFX graphics card there, it's just a PCI card. Uh, it's not got a video card in it at the moment, a 2D card, because uh, I've taken that out. I think it had an ET6000, a Sanglabs card, uh, in this AGP slot here. Uh, you can also see that this is a VIA chipset uh, motherboard, uh, which shouldn't be as good as the ALI one, and indeed it doesn't seem to be as flexible. The uh, markings on the board seem to indicate that it only goes down to 2.1 volts, uh, whereas the other one went all the way down to 2.0, and there are many fewer settings uh, available uh, for the voltage. That's probably not going to be a major deal for us today, uh, but uh, you know, it just shows that it's a less flexible board, and the multipliers only go up to 5.0 instead of 5.5, uh, and they also only go down to 2.0 instead of 1.5. Uh, so it's uh, certainly not as flexible a board. However, I did pick this board because it was the best uh, of the boards that I had at the time, and I had a number of them. Uh, so this is not a terrible board, um, it's just that I think that the ALI is going to be better. Now, I really haven't figured out why those capacitors on this board were loose the way they were. Uh, I can't really plausibly reconstruct what the person was trying to do uh, that was repairing it. Uh, obviously, um, you know, there is no other evidence of rework, uh, soldering rework on the board, so I think my idea that they were recapping this board uh, is a little bit dubious. Uh, what I can say is that I bought this board with a bunch of other motherboards uh, that were trash picked and uh, many of them had uh, missing traces and very bad corrosion from battery acid and so on. Uh, were totally unrescuable in my opinion, but there were these three ALI boards in there and I figured, well, you know, if, if, if they don't work then I can pull components off the other boards and maybe get them going. Uh, so I was very lucky, I think, to be able to get this working so easily. Um, I really didn't expect that, but of course it's also possible that it was sabotaged uh, deliberately by someone who had other problems from, with the board, uh, you know, when it was being pushed under load, and they just wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, no one else would try to use the board and waste their time with it. So I'm hoping that's not the case, uh, but of course I am going to push this board as hard as I can, and so we'll soon see if that's the problem. Well, I discovered that when I purchased this machine, it just had a fairly generic S3 Trio V Plus card in it, so just a, a PCI card. And at some point I've added the Voodoo 3DFX card and then taken the S3 out, probably for benchmarking or something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is put an AGP card in and of course I want to match the era relatively well. Uh, I had a look at the box and there's actually a sticker on the back which says 1995. Now the motherboard that we're going to be putting in is 1999. Uh, so this uh, would have been an upgrade for this machine, and so I want to match uh, the era with the graphics card as well as I can. Unfortunately, I don't have a GeForce 256 card in my collection at the moment, uh, so I'm going to go for a slightly later card, uh, and that is the uh, GeForce 2 GTS chipset, which was uh, April 2000. Uh, so that's what these Asus V7700 32 meg cards have. Uh, these should be identical, I just happen to have a spare, and uh, I'll probably use the one with the fan uh, for this build. And uh, we'll put it all in with a hard drive and probably install Windows 98, I think, uh, and see if we can benchmark the machine as it is in its current condition. Well, I did look up the main board that's in this machine, and uh, it turns out to be a fairly generic uh, 5 MVP3 uh, main board made by Lucky Star Technology, which I've never heard of before. Uh, but there's a really interesting story here. It turns out uh, that people claim the VIA MVP3 chipset that this uses is actually slightly faster than the ALI chipset. Uh, so I'm going to be really interested now to do a comparison of these two and see uh, whether that actually bears out in our benchmarks. Well, I managed to find a MaxTor 8 gigabyte drive from 1998 to put in this. Unfortunately, it's only ATA33, and the newer board will actually support ATA66, uh, but I want to keep everything on the same board anyway, so I don't think it'll really affect our benchmarks. 
Uh, for those who are wondering, the CD-ROM in this is actually a fairly common one. It looks like an old, rare one, uh, but it's actually just a 12 times CR584B. And these were quite common and it's relatively easy to find working ones. Anything uh, earlier than this is probably rare and valuable uh, since most of them just don't work anymore. Well I decided to go with Windows 98 and it tells me that this is going to take uh, 30 to 60 minutes on this machine. Uh, I haven't bothered to set up a fast way of installing uh, Windows 98 on my machines. Uh, so I'm just going to have to sit and wait, but you don't have to. Uh, it'll be done in just a moment. Well there it is folks, uh, it's installed. Now I didn't hear any sound when it started up so I'll have to install the uh, ESS 1868 sound card drivers. Uh, I've also got to install the video card drivers obviously and the VF4 in 1 chipset drivers uh, for the AGP and so on. Uh, and then we'll have to install DirectX and then we should be able to do some benchmarking of Windows 98 benchmarks. Well, as you can probably hear, everything is installed now correctly. Uh, and those of you who guessed that I had the speakers plugged into the wrong socket are absolutely right. Uh, of course, Windows 98 does install ESS 1868 drivers without any problems. Uh, so I've installed uh, DirectX 9C here, and I've also installed uh, the FutureMark benchmarks uh, from 99, 2000, and 2001. Uh, so we'll run those to benchmark the machine. Uh, so to get everything set up, I didn't have too many major problems. I had to put in temporarily another CD-ROM drive because the 12 times drive won't read rewritable CDs and I actually had some of my drivers on those. Uh, I also had to put in uh, WinZip because a few of the drivers are zip files and uh, of course I had to do the usual screwing around with the NVIDIA drivers trying to find a version that actually works with 98 and with this video card. Uh, I eventually found that version 8.05 works just fine. Uh, so everything is now set up and working the way it should. Uh, so let's get to some baseline benchmarks for this machine as it's currently set up. Well, the first benchmark that I've got is 3D Mark 99, of course. Uh, everything seems to be relatively smooth. Um, of course, the 233 MHz uh, CPU is going to run out of oomph uh, pretty soon as I go through these benchmarks. Uh, but for now I would say this is uh, mostly playable. Well of course that all ran without a hitch and uh, it's given us 1365 3D marks. Uh, so I'll run now the 2000 benchmark and uh, we'll see probably that things start to slow down, at least with this CPU anyway. This is 3D Mark 2000, uh, the so-called adventure benchmark. And as you can see, it's pretty smooth. So everything here is 1024 by 768 with 16 bit color and uh, a Z buffer of 16 bits as well. Uh, and this is really quite smooth. And certainly the uh, helicopter benchmark, which came before this, uh, was fine on low and medium settings. Uh, but when you get to high settings, it started to jerk a little bit. So it'd be interesting to see whether this does the same thing. Uh, you can see that this is exactly the same uh, settings in terms of resolution and Z-buffer, uh, but this is now medium detail. And as you can see, it's now jerking uh, at the medium detail level. Um, I think this would be probably not playable. I wouldn't play it uh, like this at all. Um, so I think that shows that you'd have to have uh, low detail. And that's exactly what I expected for this CPU. Uh, it's really not powerful enough, uh, even with this fairly good graphics card. Uh, for a game like this. And now we'll see the same thing in high detail. Uh, again, it's the same resolution and Z buffer depth, but uh, the detail level of the textures and probably the number of polygons as well, I would imagine, uh, is higher and as you can see, it's really jerky, um, almost like a slideshow. There are some bits like here which are reasonable, but uh, then it's immediately uh, back to unplayable again. One interesting thing is that in order to gauge CPU speed, it runs the same demo again, but with a smaller window, uh, so that the graphics is not actually the um, you know constraining feature. And as you can see, you still get a very very slow performance here, uh, which really shows that it is actually the CPU that's holding everything back. Well, we got 1155 3D marks. Uh, not all of the tests ran. The bump mapping environment uh, test actually didn't run because it's not supported by this graphics card. Uh, 
and uh, all of the other tests did run okay. Uh, the normal bump mapping uh, was a little bit dodgy looking in parts, uh, probably because of too low a color depth uh, in that portion of the texture, uh, but otherwise everything ran fine. Uh, but it's no surprise that we didn't get a very high score here, uh, 1155. Uh, that's again just down to the CPU, I think. Well, we're now in 3D Mark 2001, and the first benchmark is the game uh, Car Chase benchmark. Uh, now you can see that it's 1024 by 768 with 32 bit color this time and a 24 bit Z buffer. Uh, so just upping everything a little bit from uh, the 3D Mark 2000. Uh, now I'm expecting this will be quite slow uh, because this graphics card is really uh, at its limit. Uh, but it may still be playable, so it'll be interesting to see. And I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I would play a game that was that slow. Uh, so obviously the higher number of colors is great for shadows and so on, so long as everything is rendered correctly. Uh, you don't get uh, you know weird effects uh, in the shadows if there's movement. Uh, but in terms of frame rate, uh, this is really not an enjoyable experience. Uh, so the next uh, benchmark is not actually a medium detail, it goes straight to high detail. So all the settings are the same, it's just upping the texture uh, details and perhaps the number of polygons as well. And this is just taking absolutely ages to load. There's been a black screen for like 30 seconds at this point. Oh, and finally it comes up. Um, and as you can see, uh, this is absolutely useless. Uh, you're getting less than one frame per second. Uh, so uh, this is the high detail setting, uh, so it's as high as this uh, benchmark goes, uh, but clearly totally and utterly unplayable. <laughs> as you can see, we've got an absolutely dismal 284 3D marks here. Uh, well, that's obviously down to the performance of the CPU for one thing, uh, but also the uh, Nature game benchmark didn't even run. Uh, also, the environment uh, bump mapping didn't run. None of the pixel shaders ran. And uh, there are also some later tests, uh, for example, the game detail one that didn't run uh, because the graphics card just doesn't support those features. Uh, so we're really now into an era where we're beyond uh, what the hardware is capable of. Uh, now, as far as performance is concerned, we can probably improve that significantly. Um, I happen to have a K62 500 megahertz CPU, so it's an AMD chip. And uh, the only problem is that it requires 2.0 volts. And as I said previously, this motherboard only goes down to 2.1. Uh, the ALI one will do the 2.0. I'm going to try it in here anyway and see if it's supported, but it may well be that the BIOS doesn't support it or there's some other issue. Uh, so we'll give it a go uh, and see if we can get the performance at least up. Of course, it's not going to make tests run that aren't supported by the graphics card. Well, it seems to be a no-go with the AMD 500. Uh, it does have all the correct settings, uh, so I'm not actually sure why it doesn't work and I can actually find other people who run their chips at 2.1 volts. Uh, so it's a little bit strange, but it's probably just a bias uh, problem. Uh, it doesn't actually support this CPU. Uh, so it looks like the only way we're going to get it to run at that speed is to use uh, the ALI board. Uh, before I switch over to that though, I'm going to run some DOS benchmarks as well uh, with this particular machine. Of course, we'll have to go back to the Pentium 233 for that. But well, we'll start with the Superscape uh, VGA benchmark, and as you can see, this just absolutely flies through. It only takes a few seconds to run the entire thing, and it ends up with a score of 44.3 frames per second, uh, which is pretty high and definitely playable. So I think you'd be fine for DOS games. Now this is the Chris 3D benchmark, uh, and it's the 64480 version uh, because this is a faster machine. And as you can see, it's running uh, pretty well here. Uh, I don't think you'd have any worries with rotation uh, in 3D. Uh, most of this, I think, if I recall correctly, is done using floating point. And the floating point unit in the uh, 233MMX is actually pretty reasonable. And indeed, we get a score of 47.7, which is 28.6 frames per second. And finally, I'm running the PC Player benchmark, again in 64480 because this is a faster machine. And again, it's just flying through, very, very smooth. Uh, and I think it's going to give us a score of 21.9, which is 
uh, really quite good for this benchmark. Uh, so no problems at all in DOS games, uh, even with the 233 MHz CPU. So I think it's now time for us to switch over to the ALI board, and I'm really interested to see uh, just what kind of difference uh, this makes. Well, it's the next day now, and I've actually gone ahead and put the new motherboard in, the ALI one. I still have the 233 chip in it, of course. And uh, sorry that there's not an epic build montage at this point, uh, but some of the stuff that I do has to be done overnight, uh, you know, when I can't be narrating videos due to noise restrictions. Uh, but uh, everything's together. I didn't have any major problems with it. Uh, it took me a little bit to convince Windows uh, of all the ALI stuff, uh, but uh, everything went through in the end, except for the AGP driver, which I had to download and install manually. As far as BIOS options are concerned, I didn't really change very much. I went into the chipset features here and set the SDRAM CAS latency down, uh, and that's because uh, the RAM in this is PC133, and the front side bus, of course, at the moment is nowhere near that, uh, so this shouldn't be a problem. And uh, I also have SDRAM burst mode enabled and DRAM timing fast. Uh, but apart from that, there aren't really very many options to fiddle with uh, that should affect performance. Um, there are a couple down the bottom here for the AMD K6, uh, but I haven't uh, enabled those at the moment, of course, since I still have the 233 uh, MMX chip in. And the only other change that I really needed to make was just to say that it is a plug-and-play aware operating system. Uh, but apart from that, uh, everything should be pretty much standard here. I'm now running the 3 d Mark benchmarks again, and I'm not going to show them running because I don't think that there's enough difference to actually see that visually. Uh, but I will show the scores, uh, which are kind of interesting. Uh, so this is 3 d Mark 99, and we're now getting a score of 1503 with the ALI motherboard. Uh, versus uh, 1365 that we had before. Uh, so this is more than a 15% improvement, uh, which is really not expected as far as I'm concerned. Now it could be down to the fact that the BIOS settings are a little bit more tweaked uh, in this board, uh, or it may just be that it's a higher quality board. I mean, I think that Lucky Star is a pretty generic brand. Uh, but I certainly wasn't expecting uh, the difference to be this much uh, in this benchmark. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether that continues through the other benchmarks. Well, will you look at that. Uh, the score here is uh, more than 20% higher in 3D Mark 2000. Uh, we were getting uh, 1155 with the old board, and now it's 1418. Uh, I really don't have an explanation for that. Uh, I mean, obviously, these benchmarks don't necessarily scale linearly with the speed of the machine. And so maybe a small change makes a relatively large change in the benchmark score. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I really expected the difference to be lost in the noise. And uh, it's really not. Uh, this is way faster, and I've actually run this a couple of times now just to check that. The only thing I can think of is that perhaps the cache uh, on these Gigabyte boards is really far superior to the cache on the Lucky Star boards. Uh, it's the only thing that springs to mind. Uh, and I just want to emphasize that I am using all the same hardware here except for the main board. Uh, everything else is identical. So this is really uh, an interesting experiment for sure. Whoa, this is insane, guys. Uh, 387 versus 284 that we had before. Uh, that's almost 40%. Um, I am not believing these numbers at all. Uh, there's something really weird going on here. Uh, either there's uh, an amazing cache in this thing, uh, or there's something that was really badly set up uh, with the other board. Uh, I just don't believe that you should get a 40% increase in score just changing a motherboard. Uh, but that's what we have, and again, I run this uh, test multiple times just to confirm this. Uh, now, for people who are wondering, uh, I definitely did install the VIA 4-in-1 drivers on the other board. Uh, of course, uh, without the AGP driver, uh, you wouldn't even get the, the video card to work. So, uh, it was definitely installed correctly, and I did check this. Um, the only thing that I can think of uh, that I may have screwed up, and I don't think I did, uh, is uh, to have left the motherboard set at 200 megahertz instead of 233. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back and verify that I actually did that correctly uh, at some point. Uh, and I'll also run some tests uh, to see whether my cache hypothesis is true.
Uh, but yeah, this is a really outstanding result from this board uh, that I totally did not expect. Uh, so let's take a look at the DOS benchmarks and see whether things carry over there. Well, this is Superscape and uh, it's just over in a flash, uh, 182.7 frames per second uh, versus 44.3 that we had before. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, I expect that the benchmark is broken because uh, no amount of mistakes or motherboard changes is going to make the difference between 44.3 and 182.7 frames per second. Uh, I have run this many times uh, to confirm, but uh, it always gives this score. So uh, something really weird is going on here. If anyone has any ideas, uh, drop them in the comments below. Uh, so this is the Chris 3D benchmark, and it gives a score of 57.9, and we had a 47.7 before. So this one I can believe it's, uh, I think, somewhere in the vicinity of 20%. Uh, so that doesn't seem too far fetched. Uh, it's still an impressive improvement and not expected, but uh, definitely uh, more in the realms of believability. Well, this is the PC Player benchmark, and uh, as you can see, uh, it gives a score of 16.7, which is actually lower than what we had before. We had 21.9 with the old board. I actually had to go back and watch the video again to make sure that I had actually run the 64480 version and that it really did give 21.9. Uh, uh, this is also just not an expected result at all and I have no explanation for it other than possibly a broken benchmark. Uh, I really don't uh, see how it could go lower uh, when all the other benchmarks are higher. Uh, so this is all uh, very confusing and uh, I'm not sure what to make of it at the moment. Uh, we will try and dig a little bit deeper to try and figure this out before the video has to go up. Uh, but it is very confusing for sure. Well, as you can see, this board does support the K6 2 Plus uh, at 500 megahertz. Uh, I've got the front side bus set at 100 megahertz now and the multiplier at 5. And of course, there are all sorts of interesting options for overclocking this board, uh, which I could try in a later video. Uh, it might make an interesting experiment as well to see just how much more you can push out of it But I do think that going from 233 MHz to 500 is going to make a difference So let's take a look at the benchmarks. Well here we have 3 d Mark 99 and uh, there's still a few glitches But uh, bear in mind that this ran pretty smoothly before as it was uh, So we're not going to expect to see all that much difference here a lot of the glitches are just the hard drive loading anyway and nothing to do with the CPU. We're getting 3660 now uh, versus the 1501 and 1365 that we had uh, with the Pentium 233 MMX. Uh, so it's not just the speed of the CPU itself but uh, also the AMD 3D Now instructions which this benchmark does support. And I should point out that not all of the benchmarks here were actually completely smooth. Uh, so some of the pixel polygon uh, benchmarks were actually slow, although I don't really understand why, because uh, as the number of polygons was increased, it seemed to go faster and faster, so uh, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, at least you can see uh, there's a massive difference in the score uh, in 3D Mark 99 uh, with this CPU. Now this is 3D Mark 2000 with the Adventure benchmark at high detail settings, and you remember that we previously rated this as completely unplayable, now it's still pretty jerky, uh, I will say that, but uh, I don't know that I would go as far as to say this would be completely unplayable. Uh, we're getting, uh, you know, 13 frames per second, uh, which is not great. Uh, it looks like it goes down to about 10 there. And in a result here that will surprise absolutely nobody, uh, the score here is also massively higher. So 3284 uh, versus uh, 1398 and 1155 that we had before. So. Uh, well over double the score. Uh, so this is definitely making a huge difference uh, to this machine. Well this is the car chase game in 3D Mark 2001 uh, in low detail and as you can see it's dead smooth now. There's still a delay loading the higher detail version of this but this is the one that I really wanted to see because remember before uh, we had uh, multiple seconds per frame uh, now we're getting about one frame per second, so it definitely has improved and there are even patches here where it uh, starts to go, but still hasn't made it so that it's completely playable of course. Uh, this would be uh, totally unplayable in fact. Uh, but at least we can see there's a massive improvement here.
Well, there you go, guys. A total score of 1101 3D Marks on 3D Mark 2001 uh, versus the 390 that we had before, or 284 on the older board. Uh, so that conclusively proves that this CPU is an absolute screamer. Uh, but it occurs to me that I could do more. I could actually overclock this CPU, uh, which this motherboard should allow. And I could also upgrade the video card through the years and just see uh, how far you could push this system, assuming you'd upgraded it this far already, uh, you know, if you just kept upgrading the video card uh, through the years. Uh, and of course we haven't seen any real world games running on this system yet. So if you'd like to see a video on all of that, uh, then drop a like on this video and maybe give a comment below uh, what you'd like to see running here. Perhaps you uh, had games that you played back in the day uh, that aren't commonly benchmarked on YouTube uh, that you'd like to see running on this system. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, go back to the DOS benchmarks and see if they've also uh, gone much faster with this CPU. Uh, and then I'm going to try and get to the bottom of what I did wrong with that older board. Uh, you know, did I set the CPU frequency incorrectly or uh, was there a BIOS option that wasn't correct? Uh, or maybe it's just uh, something to do with the cache on this board being much better than that uh, older board. Uh, and then I think that'll uh, round out the video for the day. The first DOS bench uh, is 598.5 frames per second. Uh, this is the uh, Super Skate one, and the highest we had before was 182.7, and remember with the old board we got 44.3, so uh, that is incredible. In fact, it just runs in a second. The Chris 3D benchmark doesn't look like it's running all that much faster, to be honest. Uh, I'm not really sure why that would be. Uh, it's possible that the floating point unit in the AMD chips was not, uh, you know, as fantastic as the one in the Intel 233MMX. You've just got the speed up of the CPU uh, with a slower floating point unit. And indeed you only get uh, 63.1 here for the score uh, instead of uh, 53.9. So that's uh, not very much of an improvement at all. And interestingly enough, the uh, PC player benchmark doesn't look to be a whole load faster either, uh, which is a bit of a surprise. And I'm only seeing uh, 20.3 there, if I'm reading that correctly. And we actually had a 21.9 on the old board with the old CPU and 16.7. So uh, this one seems to be uh, maxed out somehow, or I'm really not sure what's going on there. Uh, I think this benchmark uh, just isn't very reliable, unfortunately. Well, the mystery has only gotten deeper, guys. You remember that with the old board and the 233MMX chip, uh, we were only getting 44.3 frames per second in Superscape. Well, here it is again uh, with 142.8 frames per second, and I have no idea how to explain this. This is still slower than what we got with the ALI board, uh, but it's more in line with it, at least. Uh, now, the Chris 3D benchmark is also much faster now. It was at 47.7, it's now at 70.5, uh, but that's actually faster than the ALI board. And uh, to make matters even more confusing, the PC player benchmark hasn't really changed. Uh, it varies a little bit from run to run, but it's still 20 or 21 frames per second, uh, or maybe even 22. Uh, so uh, this is really bizarre, and the only thing that's really changed here is that I'm running these directly from DOS mode uh, instead of going uh, to DOS mode from uh, Windows. So I'm going to reinstall Windows on this machine and see whether the Windows benchmarks have changed and whether I get a different score if I go from Windows into DOS mode and I see if that explains why this is now so much faster than it was before. Now, the only thing that I can come up with that could possibly explain uh, you know, the radical lift in performance that we're seeing here is that maybe the fan wasn't making contact with the CPU and we had some kind of overheating issue. I do just have it out on the bench now uh, instead of uh, in the box, uh, so maybe that's uh, to blame. Uh, but yeah, at the moment I'm really scratching my head, but I'm looking forward to trying to figure out what's going on. Well, the good news is that the Windows benchmarks are exactly the same as they were before, or at least within a few points. Uh, so we can rule out uh, any kind of overheating issue here or uh, some kind of misconfiguration. Uh, these timings were actually correct and valid.
And in fact, if I go into DOS mode from Windows, I now get the same timings again for uh, the DOS benchmarks. So it's amazing, but apparently uh, just that difference in procedure, either going to the DOS command line uh, by pressing F8 uh, when the machine is booting, or going into DOS from Windows, uh, that completely changes the benchmarks for the DOS timing. So uh, that's an interesting thing which I've not noticed before. I've seen maybe a 5% difference on Windows 95, uh, but obviously on Windows 98 this makes a much bigger difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and check the cache uh, on this board and also the uh, motherboard BIOS settings and see whether there's anything we can do to get more out of this machine or if there's an easy explanation uh, for why it's so much slower uh, than the ALI board. Well there are some settings in the BIOS that I can fiddle with here. Uh, I'm using Bank 0 and 1 uh, in the uh, main board for the SD RAM and it's currently set to 10 nanoseconds. Uh, it should be no problem to set it to 8, uh, which I'll do. Uh, there's also the cycle length which I can drop to 2. Uh, I don't think it's much else I can change here. I can set the cache timing to fastest. Uh, so let's see whether these uh, changes uh, allow this board to catch up with the ALI one or even possibly overtake it. Well that did make a small difference. Uh, we've gone from 1365 to 1387. Uh, but it's nowhere near the 1501 that we got with the ALI board. And we see the same thing with the 3 d Mark 2000 benchmark. We've got a small uplift from 1155 to 1178, uh, but we're still nowhere near the 1398 that we had with the ALI chipset. Uh, so uh, although people uh, online who are very knowledgeable sounding uh, say that the MVP3 chipset, the VIA one, uh, in this board should be much better uh, than the ALI chipset in the Gigabyte board. Um, this is really not the whole story. There's something else here uh, that is making this board quite slow. And uh, my best guess would be cache. So what I'm going to do now is run some cache benchmarks and see if that's the case. Otherwise we will just have to conclude uh, that this board is nowhere near as good as the Gigabyte one. In order to check the cache timings, I'm running the cache check program by Ray Van Tassel. And as you can see, uh, all the way up to 16 kilobyte blocks, uh, I get 3 microseconds per kilobyte. And uh, then from 32 up to 512 kilobyte blocks, I get 6 microseconds per kilobyte. Uh, and then it switches over to what is uh, almost certainly the main memory speed, 8 microseconds per kilobyte. So the two cache timings there on this board, uh, this is the VIA board, uh, the MVP3 chipset, um, the Lucky Star one, uh, the two cache timings are 3 and 6 microseconds as you can see. So let's try this same test now on uh, the Gigabyte board with the ALI chipset and see if we get uh, lower timings there. Well I guess that deals with the idea that it was cache. Uh, you can see it's pretty much exactly the same here. You get uh, up to 16 kilobytes, uh, 3 microseconds per kilobyte, and then up to 512 kilobytes, uh, 6 microseconds per kilobyte. Uh, the only difference is that main memory is at 7 microseconds per kilobyte instead of 8. Now this is the same stick of RAM, uh, so what we can conclude is that this board is able to talk to main memory faster than the other board. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just going to have to conclude that the Gigabyte board is far superior to the Lucky Star one. Uh, whether that says anything at all about the chipset, I don't know. Uh, I'd be really interested if someone else has a VIA board with an MVP3 chipset on it and can replicate this. Uh, I have 128 megs of RAM in the machine if you want to try and uh, replicate this. Uh, so I really don't have any clue uh, why it's uh, so much faster, but it is. And uh, anyway, I'm going to have to leave it there. Uh, this has been quite an epic, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, don't forget to like and subscribe, and then we'll see you in a later video. Bye!